Okay, now let's see how chain rule can help us do implicit differentiation. I've written here a problem from Cal 1. You've been given a relationship between y's and x's. This makes some curve, right? This is like your equation x squared plus y squared equals uh, 16 is a circular radius for. This is some complicated curve. Um, and you've been asked to find the slope of that curve uh, as a formula and at a specific point when you can plug in the points. So, as you learned in Cal plus 1, you don't need to actually do a lot of Herculean algebra to uh, extract y out of this and express as a function of x. You can just go ahead and differentiate implicitly, right? Do derivative with respect to x of both sides. Derivative of y would be 3y squared. But keep in mind y is a function of x. We want to treat it as a function of x. So since by chain rule, by chain rule of cap 1, it will be 3y squared times y prime or dy dx plus 2y, derivative of y squared is 2y times dy dx minus 5 constant, derivative of y is dy dx minus derivative of x squared is 2x equals uh, derivative of 4 is 0 equals derivative of 0 is 0. Okay, then what, it, what you do here, you extract the dy dx, factor out the dy dx, you get 3y three, three squared plus 2y minus 5 move the minus 2x to the other side, you get 2x on the other side divide by 3y squared plus 2y minus 5 and this is how you found the derivative of y with respect to x and you know if this was some curve right you could find the slope at any given point by this formula you can plug the xy values at that point and get the slope okay how can the chain rule that we have learned for functions of several variables help us with this uh, help us do the same thing uh, in, a, in a slightly or you can see it in a different way okay think of this as your some function of x and y. Okay? This is y cube plus y square minus 5y minus x square plus 4. And this function is always 0 at the points in, in this curve. Right? As long as you take which what do I mean by this curve and in this curve. Okay? As long as you take xy that satisfies this equation, you take that xy, plug it into this function, blah 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 plug it in, well of course that will equal zero. If you take a point that's not on this curve, of course it could give you different values. So, at those points, this function is always 0. So now, let's draw the tree diagram. f is a function of x and y. And since I'm interested in dy dx, I can think of y as a function of x. And x as a function of x, obviously. It's the same x. It doesn't matter. I apologize if I write the y's and x is slightly different, more curvy or not. Don't worry about that. So, so what do we have? We have that if I want to do the D, um, um, DF, if I were to basically write down the equation of derivative with respect to x of this thing, I will get, uh, should get derivative of 0, which is 0. So if I do curly f, curly x times dx dx plus curly f over curly y times dy dx that should be 0 because the derivative uh, because the function is constant it has a value of 0 at all those points ok now from here dx dx is just 1 right dx dx how does x change with respect to x what is the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1 so if you rearrange all this you get that dy dx is minus df dx over df dy. Okay? And if you want to write it with a more compact annotation, you would remember from your previous um, section on partial derivatives, you could, you could write this as minus f. Part if the derivative is f with respect to x 
subscripts, right? Remember the subscript notation of partial derivatives and over, right? And we can verify that. The derivative of this function with respect to x is just negative 2x. So negative negative 2x is 2x. The derivative of this function with respect to y is 3y squared plus 2y minus 5. 3y squared plus 2y minus 5. So indeed, this formula will help you there. Now the idea here is that this approach generalizes and so the same approach can help us if you are given some equation like z squared y x um, minus z y plus x y plus 3 equals 0 is a surface in 3D. I've told you a single equation in 3D will always produce a surface and if somebody asks what is uh, dz dx okay meaning at some point on the surface what's this partial derivative of z with respect to x uh, the same idea can work you can think of this as a giant function of f uh, a, a, a giant function f of x y z and then think each of these as functions of um, functions of uh, uh, x and y because I also am interested in dz dy okay so these are functions of x and y x and y x and y okay <clears throat> so um, you go ahead write down the tree diagram for the derivative you write down the partial of big F with respect to x and write down the partial of f with respect to y and you will have somewhere there dx dx which is 1 dx dy would be 0 right because x and y are independent variables um, and similarly dy dx would be 0 and dy dy would be 1 and dz dx and dz dy is exactly what we need so you could solve for those and you find out that these come out to be very similar to this, it's going to be minus f partial x or f partial z and this will be minus f partial y or f partial z. So you can verify these yourself and then go ahead and use these formulas to, to find uh, the f, uh, find df dx through this guys right and once you've done that you will find you can solve from there just like you did over there to find that this guy what we need is minus partial sub x over f partial z and this one is minus f partial y over f partial z okay these are the things you are looking for and you can then use these formulas to compute dz dx as well as dz dy on this surface. Okay? So, uh, yeah, so the chain rule can help us also do implicit differentiation for functions of one variable or as well as functions of two variables. In a given an equation where it's hard to extract y as a function of x or z as a function of y and x, it would be very hard to extract z out of this thing and ex express it as z as something involving only x and y. Right? So that's why we cannot do that here, that method, we're going to do implicit differentiation and find the answer this way. Okay?